realized Marvin stole a package off the front porch. Now he won't give it back to us. Oh, that's my connector for my refrigerator. Come here. Come here, buddy. Come here. Oh, man, he's gonna destroy it. <laughs> Marvin, come here, buddy. Come here, buddy. All right, Aww. let's drop it. Let's drop it, come on. Oh, there you go. Good job. <laughs> you little scamp. He's extra scampy today. He's just delivering it straight to you. <laughs> that's all? That's all you get. Oh, you want more? You want more? <laughs> Good morning, adventurers. Good morning. Another day working on the RV. We're back. We're back at it, guys. We are super excited because we are all sealed up on the outside. We still have some work to do on the roof, but we're going to be doing that in tandem with some other projects on the inside. That's the right. Inside. We're working on the inside finally, you guys. Things are going to go fast from here, I promise. So it's kind of tough to determine the order of operations, the order in which you should do everything in the RV, but we've decided that we have to kind of run all of our electric setup, our new 12 volt electric setup, before we can do anything else, because mm -hmm. that all has to go behind the wall. So before we can put in insulation, put any paneling over that, we have to have all those wires run. Luckily, that's the part I was most excited about. Oh, <laughs> he has been so excited. He's actually been planning it out for weeks and weeks and oh, weeks. Yeah. We are partnering with Battleborn Batteries. They are an awesome company that makes some of the best lithium iron batteries on the market. Mm -hmm. So. If you're going to be doing any kind of van life build, RV build like us, or just any kind of off the grid build, their batteries are awesome. You're going to see later on how those batteries work into the rest of the components in the system. Um, but if you want to learn more about those batteries or pick some up for your own build, we will have links in the description below. Electrical systems can be pretty complicated, but I've been literally researching this for over six months and I think I've pretty much wrapped my head around how our system needs to work. I've created a diagram in Lucid Charts that kind of puts everything down on paper first before we actually commit it to the RV. It shows how all the different components are going to work together, the fuses, the solar panels, the batteries, and then it shows how that's going to run out to all the different devices in the RV that need power. Our original plan was to put the batteries and all of the electrical components back here in the closet. If you guys remember, this was a closet at one point, but there were a couple problems. One, it cut down on our closet space, which is super valuable in a tiny confined space like this. And two, everything is really heavy. The batteries are pretty heavy as all, are all of the components. And we didn't want all the weight in the very back. So we came up with a very interesting solution. Instead, we decided to build our own custom electrical closet in this corner. And it's not just a closet, it's also going to double as a tiny flight of stairs to get you up to the overhead sleeping area. But before we started building, we really wanted to plan this out as much as possible to solve any issues ahead of time. So we built the whole thing in SketchUp, basically put together a little flight of stairs here that gives us enough clearance for all the electrical components. And we'll also have doors on the front that you can open up to access all of this stuff. But when all the doors are closed, it's basically just gonna look like a really cool integrated flight of stairs. Now the question is, can we actually pull that off? Ooh. I guess you'll find out. <laughs> we did it. You guys, we built our staircase. Check this thing out. I feel like before we go any further, we need to have a little disclaimer. We are not woodworkers. That is part of the reason why we're doing this project is because we want something that will help us learn woodworking. So this is a very noob attempt at something like this, but we're doing our best. That being said, we're pretty happy with how this is turning out. So we have these uh, slats here that are where the uh, stair is actually gonna go. Now the stairs are an inch of thick edge glued pine. So I really feel like this is gonna be super sturdy when it's all said and done. It's also all gonna be fastened to that corner that we showed you earlier in the RV. We don't have that much room to play with because if we go too far forward, the passenger seat will run into this. So we don't really have enough room to put an edge frame on this to make all these edges look really nice. So we're stuck with these plywood edges. So what I did is just took some wood filler, put it on the edges, and that's supposed to kind of smooth over the edges of the plywood so that when we go and paint it, it all looks like one uniform coat. It remains to be seen if that is a good idea or not, but we saw a lot of people online saying that this could work, so we're giving it a try. We are going to sand down the entire thing, sand down all this uh, wood filler, and uh, then finally we're gonna get to paint something. Yes. It just wouldn't be a work day without Marvin. Hey buddy, what are you doing? You're chill today, huh? Just having a chill fall day? Aww. You just brighten up our day. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the goodest boy? Oh, Mr. Marvin. Oh, Mr. Marvin. Guys, we're trying to pick out a white paint 
Who knew? It's impossible. Look at this. <laughs> We're like, oh, I think I like this one, which looks nice and white, like a soft, delicate white. When you put it on these, now all of a sudden it looks kind of pink. And we're bad with colors. <laughs> <laughs> Who knew? Picking a white would be the hardest thing we've done all day. Yeah. Which white do you guys recommend? Ah! Success! We did it! <laughs> Mostly the guy convinced us because he was a lot more confident than we were, but yes. I am very happy. Look at our white. Looks great, guys. <laughs> all right, that's enough dilly dallying. We'll see you back at the garage. Did you hit it? Yeah, sure. Okay. Good. Okay. I'm just doing it. We did a test piece uh, of our plywood with the white on it that we just got. And I'm thinking that's exactly what we were hoping for. For reference, this was the first white. It might look the same to you they guys, but this I one- I promise they're different. <laughs> yeah, this one really is a lot more it's uh, like, blue. Yeah, it's like a blue stark white, and this is like a warmer pinkish white. Yeah, which is what we were looking for. Yeah, it's all in the details. You'll see, it'll make it all come together later. But our stairs have the wood grain on the top, so we are gonna test that stain on the steps right now. This is actually what we are going to use for the stair steps. We went ahead and cut a little piece out and we we're gonna try our stain on that just to make sure it's also perfect. What do you think it will be? All right, this stuff's kind of weird. <laughs> we went with a gel stain. Man, it really goes on like just some thick so barbecue sauce. <laughs> it's really like peanut butter barbecue sauce. Well, all right, let's see how it goes. Yo, we almost forgot to wipe this off. Whoopsie! That's okay. <laughs> well, it like looks like a wiping thing. Wiping off chocolate. <laughs> yeah, peanut butter chocolate sauce, which now I want. Thank you very much. Ta-da! Okay. I mean, it's pretty natural color. I thought it would be a little darker, but whatever. What color was this? It's a uh, golden pecan. Is what mm. it's supposed to be. Does that look like golden pecan to you guys? Sure. I'd eat it. <laughs> I was about to say, all this is just making me want dinner real hard. <laughs> Our piece is somewhat complete. At least the uh, frame is beautiful. Look at this. We almost have a complete set of stairs. Uh-huh. So we kind of did it in a few different pieces. We have the back panel. We have this new panel going over here. So we'll get this and the back panel in there so that we can start installing our electrical components back here. We'll probably leave the bulk of this out for a little bit until we get that all squared away. But I'm pretty happy we have one corner that's actually like coming together. Yeah, we can't put in the rest of the paneling until we run the wiring. So we're gonna run all that through here and then later on we'll, we'll figure out what we're doing with the walls. But then it's gonna be uh, cutting the countertop pieces for this mm -hmm. or the steps actually. And then getting those all stained, getting those installed and then putting doors on this and then profit. Ooh. Yeah, now if we can just keep this nice and white while we do this all, that'll yeah. be the true miracle here. <laughs> Will it fit? Oh man, will our whole wall come crashing down? Never. Ta-da! Yay! Well, that looks like it's meant to be. <laughs> it does! This big old behemoth right here is the inverter. So I mentioned earlier on in the video that we're building a 12 volt power system. This is for 120 volts. So in addition to being able to power stuff directly from the batteries like the lights and little 12 volt outlets and things like that, we're also going to have the classic power that you'll find in your home, at least here in North America, 120 volts. This will also allow us to plug into shore power, which will feed through this and then ultimately charge our batteries. We're also going to wire it up to the engine so that when we're driving, that's gonna charge the battery. So we're gonna have three ways to get power, y'all. This equipment can get kind of hot. So I've been in contact with Battleborn and they recommended because this is such a confined space to put an exhaust fan on here. So I am gonna be having a powered exhaust fan either here or here or somewhere. TBD. To give you guys an idea of the amount of clearance we have in here, <laughs> there you go. Look, Look it's, at this. it's meant to be. Wow, yeah. So it's recommended in the manual to make sure you have four inches of space on all edges of the inverter, which we do mm -hmm. for the most part, you know, give or take a quarter inch, but 
I think I think we're good. We're eventually going to put doors on here. You'll open it like this in order to get to these little switches and to read the alarms and stuff. Close that and then open this and this will allow us to access all of the other components of the system that are going to be mounted here and over here. For those of you wondering, no, we're not leaving this horrible linoleum mess down here. <laughs> we'll be putting some plywood down in there to make the bottom very nice. Yeah, and then this will be the door to access mm -hmm. the batteries. Yep. It's actually the next day and it's freezing outside. This might be the coldest morning we've had so far. I think it's in the 40s right now. Yeah. So I'm all bundled up properly. <laughs> We're not gonna let that stop us. We've actually decided that our breaker box for all of our different devices and things is gonna be right here up in the cabinet, not actually down here, because we didn't really have room for it. Most of our stuff is going to be ran with this. This is actually a duplex wire. So that means that you have the positive and negative wire run inside of this one single cord which is awesome because that means that the whole wire run is very clean. You don't end up having two loose wires. You just have this one nice strong wire. This is all marine grade too. So waterproof, sunproof. Yeah. But our strategy for this is uh, we're going to start with the simpler devices that have just one cord running to them. So this one is the wire for the fridge. So we ran it right through the wall up to where the breaker panel is going to be right here. Next up, I'm going to run a single 12 gauge wire to the two different uh, ceiling fans that we're going to be installing at a later date. Meanwhile, while Eric's having fun running all the wire, I'm doing a project that we have been putting off for a very long time, which is scraping down all of the wood in here. So our former paneling was not only like nailed and stapled to the walls, it was also glued to the posts that were behind it. We've got the oscillating tool with this nifty little attachment. So it just wiggles back and forth and essentially like, oh God. <laughs> What did you break? It's the hole. I just keep falling into it. It just oscillates back and forth and essentially chisels it off for you. So before I was using a hammer and chisel and it was really annoying and I kept putting big fractures in the wood. Yeah. And now this, this is much more it efficient. Off. Yeah. What are you doing, mister? You're up early. <laughs> oh, you're so happy too. So we woke up on the right side of the bed, huh? We just randomly hear a little jingle off in the distance and then we know Marvin's, Marvin's coming. coming. <laughs> Is that your sign? You want me to come out and play with you? <laughs> So I've been running this wire through the wall here, ran it up to this. I just want to do a test of the dimmer switch down here. So these are, we're going to be using a bunch of lights like this. And then I have this handy little dimmer switch that's going to be sitting in the wall. Look at that. Okay. Let's see. Oh, <gasps> Ooh. man, I have a really good idea. Okay, Get it. That's, <laughs> that's enough. Now he's done for the day. He's doing nothing else. That's, that's, a, that's a job done. <laughs> yeah. We just got the closet light wired up here. And look at these cool little switches we got. These little toggle guys. Woo! It works. Yeah. So you could just get normal switches to flip, but where's the fun in that? So we got really fun ones. I'm just mocking up all the different components uh, for this little electrical closet. Um, so you guys saw the big fat inverter earlier that is fitting in here nicely. The Battleborns are going to be sitting right down here. We actually have three of these. So I'm really just testing to make sure that we design this properly. We're supposed to have the perfect amount of space for every single component. So we're gonna have three batteries here and then all the different components and bus bars and things like that that manage where the power goes are going to be sitting here. I've just been taping them here mainly because I'm too afraid to actually put screw holes in there <laughs> and then find that I need to change it around. This is the master kill switch for the system. This is gonna be mounted right here. So the batteries go directly into this and then it feeds into the system. So you can turn the whole thing on or off. This looks like it's, a nuclear reactor switch. I was about switch. to say it's so substantial, yeah, it's very I like cool. it. This is what handles the charge coming in from the uh, solar panels. That's gonna be mounted right over here. Snug as a bug mm -hmm. in a rug. So our plan is uh, once we get all these components wired up and everything working, we're going to give you guys a proper uh, walkthrough of the entire system, top to bottom, show you how everything's connected. But this was just kind of more about getting this whole closet done and seeing if we could actually design this such a custom piece. But so far it's working out. We haven't run into too many issues. We also just got this in. This is going to be the fuse panel for all of our 120 volt stuff over here and then our 12 volt stuff over here. Obviously this can't fit down here. We really couldn't make that work. So what we're gonna do is run all of those up to a cabinet that we're gonna build up here that's gonna have a door that opens up to this beautiful panel. 
I also got pretty much all the lights wired and we're waiting for it to get dark outside so that I can test and see how much light these actually make because the you saw the lights are so small, so I'm a little skeptical that they can make enough light to light up the whole RV. So when darkness falls, we're gonna do a little test. But before that, we're gonna get this place cleaned up. Ooh, it is officially nighttime. Time to check the lights and see if they are bright enough for us. All right, you guys, we're in the RV. It is dark, a little bit creepy. <laughs> <laughs> it's so dark yeah, out here. That's just a flashlight illuminating us right now, but we're gonna turn that off. We've temporarily wired everything up and we're gonna turn on all the lights that we wired today and see how bright it actually is. Ooh, it worked! Wow. Oh! That's actually really bright. Oh, it's so bright! That, and that's only a few of the lights. Wow, that's a lot wow. brighter than I thought it was gonna be. So then we have our closet light. There we go. Will this one go? Yeah, go for it. Ta-da! Dang! So this is one, two, three lights, the kitchen light and then the closet light. But in addition to that, ah, jeez. In addition to that, we're gonna have two lights in the overhead sleeping area and then four lights under the cabinets. Oh, it's gonna be bright in here. I'm yeah. impressed. And half of these lights are covered by blue tape. So oh yeah, that's true. This is brighter. what we got going on up here. <laughs> and I love that we can dim it. Well, this has been some exciting couple days. I can't believe we didn't think we would get all the wiring done or anything or any of that built, but we did so much. So we still obviously have so many projects left to do. I'm not really sure which one we'll tackle next, but from here on out, it should be fun stuff, putting stuff together more on the inside, making it look more like a home day after day. It'll be a home one day. <laughs> one day. All right. Goodbye adventures. <laughs> we'll see you on the road.